hello everyone. Um, I'm going to talk uh, today about uh, three-dimensional documentation, but more importantly, the reconstruction and also the visualization of size photography. Uh, how can we use it uh, in a post-excavation process for analyzing our data? Um, so first of all, before I begin, I would just like to express my my thanks towards the whole team who worked on this project. Uh, uh, the, the Polish project, the Sarukal Hadid. Uh, obviously, without the hard work, I wouldn't have much to show you today. Um, so the, the site itself, Sarukal Hadid, it's, uh, it's located in uh, the Emirate of Dubai, just on the border between Abu Dhabi and Dubai itself, around 60 kilometers south uh, from Dubai city, and around 90 kilometers uh, uh, east northeast from uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, at the site, uh, there are various international missions working at the same time. Uh, the numbers of the missions are changing between three and five. Uh, so I'm only going to present the, the, the data from our own project, the, the Polish project, uh, which began uh, 2016 and it's still ongoing. Actually, just returned two days ago from the field. Um, so I can only talk about the small section of the site, unfortunately, uh, because of the strict uh, um, policies of the, the, the municipality of Dubai, we not allowed really to steer into other people's territory on the site. So, uh, so the, the date, date is limited, but, uh, but it's quite informative still. Um, so the site itself, uh, it's, uh, it has two main occupation phases. Uh, the first one is um, it's called uh, so-called Wadi Souk, which uh, dates to roughly the first half of the second millennium BC. And uh, it's mainly represented uh, by uh, flintos and, uh, and uh, uh, hearts and, uh, and bone, bone fragments and, and fossils dug into the bedrock itself under the desert. Um, the second and the, 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 the most important phase of the site is dates to Iron Age 2, which is around uh, 1100 to 800 BC. And uh, uh, also there are other occupation, periodic occupation uh, during the Iron Age 1 and uh, also in the early Islamic period, but I'm not going to mention that because we, we didn't have any of these uh, occupational phases in our area where we're working at. Uh, so the, the, the Iron Age 2 phase, uh, which is the, the main interest of our research, is uh, the most important feature that associated with it. It's, uh, I hope it's the later, yeah? It's this, this slack coat, which coats the, the, the surface of the, of the desert. Uh, uh, that the surface that dates to the to the Iron Age too, and also there are numerous uh, artifacts uh, that are scattered all over at various elevations, and um, this was one of the first problems we faced that it was very difficult to see uh, which artifact goes which with face because uh, at uh, it, at Iron Age two there is already an active dune system here, so dunes are moving. Uh, surfaces are changing and uh, so there is huge elevation differences uh, <coughs> within the same surface uh, so we have uh, artifacts coming out from uh, two meters difference elevation but they actually belong to the same face and it's very difficult to tell uh, um, uh, what is what was the actual surface at the time and uh, which object goes with which surface itself so as you can see the the object just lying in the, on the on the surface uh, uh, of the of the ancient dune system, there is technically no structures at all. So this is just objects in the sand, quite literally. Uh, this comes the, the, there comes the second problem that uh, these are just a few uh, examples of artifacts. Uh, also, we have very few pottery. In, in in this season, we found ten pottery shirts and about uh, three hundred uh, uh, metal finds. Uh, just to give you a, an idea about the site itself, uh, most of them are copper. There are a few iron objects as well, but uh, a lot less in, in number. And they uh, they are also top different. There are many weapons, of course. Uh, also, there is this pretty enigmatic snake that sort of properly uh, connects to some cult. Uh, also, there are some ornaments, some earrings, uh, rings, uh, also to jewelry, also some beads as well. Uh, so. Uh, <coughs> The, the second problem with the site itself, I mean, excavating the site itself, is, uh, is, is the sand. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. And it's, it's extremely difficult to dig in the sand because it's very fluid. Uh, it's 
almost impossible to cut sections at the higher levels. When you reach lower elevations, uh, because of the pressure, the sand compacts somehow. So we managed to have up to one meter high profiles, but usually in the 50 centimeter range. So, and uh, the policy of the, the municipality of Dubai is that each square needs to be excavated down to bedrock, which means sometimes seven meters down into the sand. <laughs> which is, you can see the sandbags we have to use to, to retain the, the, the sand. Uh, so it's, it's very difficult to work in, and uh, it means that the seven meters profile have to be recorded in, in 20 different uh, stripes of, uh, of uh, so, so it's very difficult to have an overview of what's happening here, because uh, not just the, 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 the site itself fragmented between the teams themselves, but also the, 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 the stratigraphical, stratigraphical sequences are just cut into pieces and it's, it's, <coughs> it's, it's almost impossible to, to see what's happening unless you combine all data together, which we did. Uh, so the, the next problem is, uh, is the almost complete lack of any sort of uh, stratigraphic marker that we can actually follow and assign a stratigraphical unit to. Uh, since there are no structures, there is just sand. Uh, but we know that there has to be some sort of stratigraphy because the objects are at different elevations and also there are different types of objects. Um, so uh, the, there are only three uh, markers that we could use. One is the, the slag itself, uh, but we had to treat that with cautious because uh, uh, this area here, if you look at it, it's, it's at, at the edge of the site. The middle of the site is here and it was excavated by a Jordanian team in 2003 to 2009. And uh, they technically just dug right down to the bedrock in the middle of the site, and then they left, and then the whole site just collapsed into the middle, washing everything with it. So uh, all the, the slag, and the, this is for sure, for example, is artificial. This is just the collapse of the sand. And uh, so this was the <laughs> second problem. How are we going to actually uh, know where is the limit of the disturbed barrier, which is, and which is uh, what is real stratigraphy? Uh, um, so uh, just to just show you an example of how we did the documentation itself. So we had to do it like in, we dig down 50 centimeters record, dig down 50 centimeters record again. And then if we were lucky, we could manage to uh, record a, a larger uh, section, which is, this is around, well, it's around 70, 80 centimeters, maybe one meter. Um, and, uh, but there are gaps in between because of the, 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 the nature of the sand. Uh, so, uh, it's not food data, but it was enough to to uh, to uh, paste them together and sort of reconstruct what's happening uh, with the stratigraphy. Um, and uh, the next thing that we could use, we realized uh, only in the second season that actually it's a useful uh, uh, tool to use to to, uh, uh, to see what's happening with the stratigraphy is this uh, natural bending in the sand. This is the Iolian sand uh, deposits, and this sort of act like three links of it, like how the sand slowly builds up over the years. Uh, but this uh, pattern is only visible when the sand is wet. Th these two pictures actually show the same profile. This shows when it's dry and this shows when it's wet. And uh, needless to say, it's, uh, say that it's very rare that it's wet. The sand is wet in the desert. So we actually have to spray it with uh, water in order to, to get this pattern out. And, uh, but the, the sand stays wet only for sometimes 30 seconds if it's under direct sunlight. So we have to record really fast. So uh, the only documentation method we could actually re really use was photogrammetry. That was the only viable option. We experimented in the first season with all sorts of uh, documentation methods, starting from hand drawing to uh, total station measurements and measuring the, the, the elevation of the stratigraph in the profile. But, uh, <laughs> but in the end, uh, by the second season, we, we realized that the only way that we can actually do this properly is, is photogrammetry. I'm not going to go very much into details. Uh, the, the process itself, how you create a photogrammetric model, I'm pretty sure most of the audience are already familiar with it. Uh, so the only spe special thing we did was uh, that we, we just sprayed the profile with water before, before recording it. Um, and, uh, and then just photograph it and uh, created a, a, a 3D model of vertical or horizontal surfaces. Uh, at the time, uh, we used, uh, uh, I guess, a photo scan uh, to, to create the, the 3D models. And uh, this, at the end of the season, allowed us to paste together. The, this, this shows the, the bedrock itself with some of the features, uh, uh, postals all around. Uh, 
So this allowed us to paste together the, the, the orthophotos to have uh, an overview of the site, not just horizontally, but also vertically, which I will show you in one second. Um, so uh, this we did in AutoCAD. Uh, so the first idea was to, to, uh, to study the, the, the stratigraphy on the orthophotos themselves while they paste it together in a three-dimensional uh, workspace in, in AutoCAD. It was relatively straightforward to do so, but the problem was with the resolution of the uh, the orthophotos that they were very large uh, because the stratigraphical layers were like so thin that we needed high resolution and it was extremely <coughs> to, slow to work with in AutoCAD because uh, 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 it took quite a while to, to, to load all the, all the images and also it was from a distance it was not really informative because we couldn't really see anything so uh, then we decided okay maybe it would be a better option to to use the drawings themselves uh, uh, and combine those together. So we did this in uh, uh, based on based on uh, the data for, uh, from AutoCAD. We did this in 3D Studio Max. We just tactically build a, pl uh, a model of the excavation area from simple planes and use the texture of uh, uh, the drawings themselves as te texture to, to project onto these planes. And this gave a really good uh, general idea of what's happening uh, uh, in the in the trenches. We managed to resolve quite a few uh, problems. For example, in this area, we realized that it was completely uh, it was dug down to to this level, and uh, everything above was completely disturbed. Uh, you can see here in this profile the the, the angle of the collapse, where the whole uh, whole uh, side of the, the the sand wall is collapsed uh, into the middle of the site. Um, and also, additionally, we managed to uh, to reconstruct the, the the most important surface for us, uh, the Iron H2 surface, uh, based on based on the elevation data from the uh, from the uh, the drawings themselves, from the autophotos themselves. We're talking about this this yellow uh, layer. This is the Iron H2 uh, surface, including also this area. This is a this uh, a, this is an area of concentration of ash. Uh, so uh, used, using this elevation data, uh, we reconstructed the, the, the topography of how the surface looked like the, in Iron H2. This was also done in uh, 3D Studio Max. Uh, I'm apologizing, I forgot to include a slide on that. Uh, technically, we just, uh, we, we drawn the outline of the, the, the profiles uh, along the, the edge of the square and then interpolated the surface in between. Uh, and then to double check that our results is accurate enough, we, we, we plotted out all the, all the finds that were found on the site and we measure uh, in situ and measure the coordinates with the uh, uh, total station to see that actually if it follows the, 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 the surface and, uh, and it did in most cases. And uh, also this uh, helped us to, act, to uh, assign uh, uh, objects to actual the phase itself because there are 90% of the objects actually following the, the, this surface and there are some objects that are higher up uh, in this area, and, but they are way up higher, like a meter or two meters higher. Uh, and then we already knew from, uh, from the looking at the orthophotos that these actually came from disturbed areas. So we knew that we can disregard these objects, they are not actually in situ. Uh, and, uh, and also to make this, fr the problem with this was that it looked very nice, but it was only usable for, for the surveyors of the, of the project because uh, most team members are not familiar on how to use AutoCAD or, or they didn't even have the software to open it so we we thought that uh, it would be maybe easier to to uh, to uh, uh, visualize this data in a 3d PDF because everybody can open a 3d PDF and this is also <laughs> the, something that we can submit to the local authorities because for sure they would know I have no idea what to do with this uh, so we created uh, this is just a, a, a general uh, figure showing the, the same surface in the uh, top-down view. Uh, so we created a 3D PDF uh, that shows the, 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 the site layout and uh, it's comp as, as all 3D, 3D PDFs, it's, it's uh, interactable of course. You can zoom in and, and rotate it around and, uh, and then that's all. That was the final result of the, of the project. Thank you very much.